All right, so this video acts as somewhat of a follow-up to a video I've already made, Properties of Logarithms. In this video, we're gonna use the properties I taught in that video to solve logarithmic equations, okay? Uh, if you're looking for examples such as these, right, exponential equations, there's a separate video on these. So all of these equations uh, will have logarithms in them, obviously. And what I'm gonna do is all of the examples that I go through, I'm gonna try to give you a wide variety, right? Different forms, different types, uh, just to see different ways of thinking about it. But one thing I'm gonna keep consistent is that I'm gonna have it so all of the logarithms are the same base, right? There are uh, ways to uh, combine logarithms that have different bases, but that should be its own video. It's kind of an extra technique that um, I haven't shown yet. So if you're looking for that specific thing, I should have another video on my channel by this point on that stuff, all right? So let's go through this first example. We have a logarithm of x plus a logarithm of x minus one equal to a logarithm of three x plus 12. So the general strategy for these kind of problem, problems is either you want to condense, you wanna, you wanna condense each side to just a single logarithm, right? So you have a one logarithm on each side of the equation, or you want to um, make it so you just have a single logarithm on one side of your equation, and then maybe a, a constant, like a number on the other side. So in this case, since we have logarithms on both sides of the equation, we'll do the first. We'll combine it so we have one logarithm on each side. So based off our, uh, what was essentially the product rule, we can combine these two logarithms. They have the same base. When you don't see a number there, you can assume the base is 10. That is kind of the default. And we can rewrite it as this as logarithm of x multiplied by x minus one. And that's equal to logarithm of three x plus 12. All right, now we multiply these inside stuff, right? So that gets us logarithm of x squared um, minus just x. And that's equal to logarithm of 3x plus 12. All right, and what we're able to do now is cancel out the logarithms on both sides. The reason for that is because the logarithms have the same base. The way I typically describe it is we're kind of um, raising everything as an exponent with a base of 10, right? And it's kind of being canceled out on both sides, just the specific logarithm, right? So we're canceling out the logarithm on both sides and we end up with x squared minus x, uh, and that's equal to 3x plus 12. Now at this point, this should be something you're familiar with, solving a quadratic equation. I'll bring everything to one side, so I'm gonna be left here with x squared. Uh, subtracting three x from both sides gets me negative four x here. Uh, and then subtracting 12 gets me minus 12. Uh, just minus 12. And that's equal to zero. Now I can factor this, right? You should be familiar with um, doing like, uh, like AM method, some product. So I try to find numbers that multiply to this and add to this. So my numbers here are going to be x um, plus two and x minus six, and that equals zero. Now I do my little small diagram and I get my two values for x being x equals negative two and x equals positive six, okay? And that's normally where I would leave it. However, certain classes might do things a little differently and 
I'm not exactly sure how the New York State Regent Syllabus, the, the state where I live and the curriculum I'm more familiar with, I'm not sure how that syllabus makes you do these. So one thing you might have learned at this point is you're not supposed to have negatives in a logarithm. Um, let me just grab some extra sheets here. So what you need to do is something like this, and this will be totally dependent on what your teacher is telling you to do. So you might be allowed to stop here, and that might be fine, but your teacher might have you do this extra thing, where it's like, all right, I'm gonna put in uh, both of these values into my original equations, into my original logarithms. So for positive six, uh, it's going to be logarithm of six plus logarithm of six minus one, which is five, and that's equal to logarithm of three times six, 18, plus 12, which is 30, right? And that's fine because all of the numbers that end up inside the logarithms are positive. But say we have we put in negative two. We have a logarithm of negative two. And based on the type of stuff you're currently doing, that doesn't really make sense right now. Right, because imagine logarithm base 10, right, of negative two equals some number x. We're not sure what that is, okay? So that's almost as rewriting this as 10, a positive 10 to the x power is equal to negative two. How could that be possible, right? It, it, it doesn't make sense whatever I'm putting in here whether it's a, a positive number or a fraction or something like that, I'm typically always getting out a positive number. So what you do is anytime one of these answer choices um, leaves you with negatives inside your logarithms, it's not that the negative two is negative, it's that the numbers that end up in here become negative. That's an answer you might need to reject. Now, I say kind of, and I'm putting a lot of kind of stipulations on that because this does make sense in a certain context, right? It's definitely not something you're going through in this class. And for, for those people that, uh, for the people that do need to know about how to deal with negatives inside of a logarithm, they're not watching this video. That's kind of a more advanced concept that requires something called complex analysis. You go through something called complex numbers in Algebra 2. Um, and in college, there's kind of a whole class on complex numbers, and this becomes kind of very basic. But it's something that, for now, in your current algebra class, just a rule, you should not be allowed to have negative numbers inside of a logarithm. So just to kind of reiterate, some teachers might allow you to stop here. Other teachers might require you to check to see which of these values is allowed. If you've taken a geometry class before, it's very similar to if you find the length of something using an equation, you should reject negative numbers because a negative length doesn't make sense. Same thing, you should reject anything that causes you to have negatives inside your logarithm. Okay, and that's the last time I'm really gonna mention that um, <coughs> for the rest of the problems, I'm really gonna stop here. Checking to see whether any, any negative things enter your logarithm is very trivial, should be kind of the easy part. All right, so let's move on to the next example. So here's our second example. Logarithm base four of three x plus two minus logarithm base four of six of x minus six uh, is all equal to one, okay? So difference between this problem and the last problem is the last problem didn't have anything that kind of wasn't a logarithm. Here we have a term that's, it's just one, but still it's something that isn't a logarithm. So that means um, we're going to have to set all of our logarithms to one side and try to solve that way. So here's how that would work. Now this example is pretty simple, um, but it's, Good for demonstration purposes. So we're subtracting two logarithms with the same base. 
that means we can convert it. It's, it's basically the quotient rule for logarithms. So this can be converted to logarithm base four of um, 3x plus two over x minus six, and that's all equal to one. So now what we have is a single logarithm here and just some constant term there. So we can get rid of our logarithm. And what we're doing is we're making it so both sides uh, have a base of four and whatever is already there becomes an exponent. So it's this kind of thing. So it's going to now be four raised to logarithm base four of three x plus two over x minus six. And then four raised to the first power on the other side. Now, from a logarithm rule we talked about in the last video, these should cancel out, and what I'm left with is whatever's in here, which is 3x plus 2 over x minus 6. And here, I'm left with just 4 to the first, which is equal to 4. What you're basically, basically doing at this step is converting this equation from logarithmic form to exponential form. It's kind of the same steps, but I look at it slightly differently. Uh, now from here, it's something you're familiar with, right? I multiply the uh, x minus 6 to both sides, right? And I'm left with 3x plus 2 is equal to 4x minus 24. Um, I'll add the 24 to both sides. That gets me 26 here. And I'll subtract the 3x to both sides and that gets me just one x here. So I get x simply equals 26. All right, so for this problem, I made sure to use nicer numbers. I may or may not have cut out the previous example because that just was a dumpster fire. Um, however, I think it's still maybe a good learning opportunity. So here, where we have the natural logarithm, okay? Now remember, the natural logarithm has a base E. e is that constant, uh, it's an irrational number in the same way pi is, and a lot of times we can leave it the same way in geometry, you left a lot of things in terms of pi, we can leave things here in terms of e. So, first thing, let's start combining our logarithms. We just want to deal with log base something on each side. Uh, here, we look for our power rule. This is the only one that has it, so this is going to change from 2 ln of 4, to becoming ln of four to the second, which is 16, right? So I'm left with ln of 16 here, and I still have the plus ln x minus one, and that's equal to one plus ln of two x. Now here I can combine these two to become, uh, using the product rule, right? So 16 times x minus one becomes ln of 16x minus 16. And on this side I still have a one plus ln of two x. I can't combine these, right? So what I'll do, I'll subtract this over ln of 2x minus ln of 2x. And from here, we can use the product rule. All right, so that's going to, sorry, the quotient rule. So because we're subtracting logarithms with the same base of e, I now divide these. ln of 16x minus 16, that's equal to 2x, and that's equal to 1. I can simplify this, right? So this is going to become uh, ln of, uh, not 16, right? 16 divided by 2, 8x minus 8 over x, and that's equal to 1. Now I have a single logarithm, right? This is the situation I've always wanted. This is the situation I'm always going for. So. I can eliminate on both sides that specific logarithm term. 
what's the base in this case? It's e. So I make it the base of my exponent on both sides. It cancels out my logarithm, so I'm left with 8x minus 8 over x is equal to e to the first, all right? Which is just e. Now we have to go about actually solving our equation, all right? We have 8x minus 8 over x equals e. I'll multiply this x over to the other side. 8x minus 8 equals ex. And I always write it as ex because the variable is going to go in the back. Always remember, e is not a variable. We know exactly what it is. It's just too long to actually write out. Okay, so from here, uh, we want to get x by itself, right? So what I'm going to do is... I'm actually going to um, move, these, move this uh, negative 8 over here and move this ex over here. Okay, so this is kind of a, a trickier type of equation to solve, um, which is why I always tell people uh, practicing literal equations, if you've never heard of those, it's basically solving equations that have only variables in them. Doing practice with that really helps out your algebra in like so many different areas, right? Because now that I have these two terms together, what can I do? One of the most basic things you've learned so far, factoring by GCF. The X is a GCF, right? So now I have X and then eight minus E is equal to eight. And then I divide, right? Divide by eight minus E, divided by eight minus E. And that's gonna be equal to or that eventually gets us, sorry, that's gonna get us x is equal to eight over eight minus e, and that is our final answer, All right? So hopefully that wasn't too confusing. I'm really just using the same properties of logarithms that I talked about in my previous video. Uh, and then once I eliminate the logarithm, it just becomes a kind of solve for x problem that you've done so many times. So let me read this one out. Uh, we have logarithm uh, base three of x squared plus 24 plus three log base three of two x equals four plus logarithm of x, or sorry, it should be log base three of x, right? All of these should have the same base plus log base 3 of 8x squared. So what's our first step? We want to condense all the logarithms, bring it so that on each side I have at most one thing that has logarithm base something of something, right? So first I look at, okay, this one's definitely going to uh, use the, uh, the power rule, right? So I condense this, I bring this in here to become an exponent, the exponent of 2x. So 2x, and then that whole thing raised to the third, would eventually become 8x cubed, right? So let's do logarithm of base 3 of x squared plus 24 plus logarithm base 3 of uh, 8x cubed is equal to 4 plus log base 3 of x plus log base 3 of 8x squared, okay? Now from here, we can start combining stuff. It looks like both of these are logarithms with the same base being added together. That means power uh, product rule, right? So I can multiply these. So I get logarithm base three, and I'm not gonna multiply these out just yet. I'm gonna leave it as x squared plus 24 times eight x to the third. For a specific reason, I see something on this side that makes me think I don't wanna actually multiply that out yet. So here I have four plus 
logarithm base 3. Uh, x times 8x squared is 8x to the third, right? And I, hopefully you see where this is going at this point. Um, now, I can't exactly cancel out the logarithms on both sides because I still got this thing here. Right? Whatever I end up doing to these is going to end up happening to this thing also, and that might make something a bit messy. I won't be able to cancel out as cleanly. So what I'll do here is subtract this logarithm to both sides. 8x to the third. That cancels. Here, when I subtract 8x to the third, it becomes logarithm base 3 of this whole thing. x squared plus 24 times 8x to the third divided by 8x to the third. And all of that is equal to 4. All right? Now, these two things cancel out, right, in common terms. And I'm left with logarithm base 3. Um, of just x squared plus 24 equal to 4. Now I do that thing of canceling the log on one side. Since the base of 3 is here, right, um, again, like I said before, this is basically converting this whole thing into exponential form. I get x squared plus 24 is equal to 3 raised to the fourth power. Okay, let me grab. There, this will work. Uh, another sheet of paper here, because this is me writing on something we, a piece of paper we already use. Pull that out, it should come out nicely. So, 3 to the 4th power is 81. So, now I have x to the 2nd plus 24 equals 81. And this is just solving an equation, solving for x. So I subtract 81 to both sides, x squared plus 24 minus 81 is equal to 0. Now I do the, okay, what are two numbers that add, that sorry, multiply to negative 81, add to positive 24. Uh, that's going to be x um, plus 27 and x minus 3, which eventually gets us our answers of x equals 27 or sorry, x equals negative 27, and x equals positive 3. And like I mentioned in the first example, uh, if your teacher requires it, you would put these back in for this equation and make sure that you don't have any negatives in your logarithm. But if your teacher doesn't require that, this is where you end. That's what x equals. So now to quickly recap. Right? What, what do you want to do in solving a logarithmic equation? Okay, so you're, you might have logarithms on both sides. You might have logarithms only on one side. Uh, what you want to do is condense everything to a single logarithmic expression on each side. Now, if what you're left with is, a, and this is all assuming that they're the same base, um, like I mentioned in the beginning, uh, if you have different bases, there is a way to do it, change of base, but that will need to be its own video. Um, so assuming that they're the same base uh, and you only have a logarithm on one side and a single logarithm on the other, then you could cancel out the logarithms and deal with the equation uh, normally. The way we did it in example one, here. Now, a lot of times that won't be the case. You'll have some extra stuff here that won't allow you to immediately just cancel logarithms on both sides. In that case, like in example five, and I think actually all of the other examples except for one, uh, we wanted to s subtract away or add away or take away essentially the logarithm from one side, bring it to the other side. So we had a single logarithm on one side and just some constant on the other side. All right, logarithms can be quite a complicated topic somewhat unintuitive, uh, but with some practice, they become super simple. Um, if you have any questions, throw it down in the comments. If this video helped at all, hit the like button. Other than that, good luck.